Hey guys, thanks so much for getting on the call tonight. I'm so excited because we have Mrs. Jody Valdez, who just happens to be a one-star diamond. She's grown rather quickly, and I'm telling you, it's because from day one, she decided that she was going to make this a business, and she has committed and has been active ever since. I've had the pleasure of attending one of her Super Saturdays, and just the way she talked to her coaches and prospects, just I was in awe because it was just kind of like one of those, I'm going to shoot you straight here. I'm not messing around. There's no sense in lollygagging. You know, she was just telling you, here's what's up. So that's um, one thing that's very admirable about Jody, and I'm excited to hear a little bit of that tonight. So thank you so much, and I'm going to turn it over to you, girl. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I've never been told that I hold back with words, you know, and I've always been told that I'm pretty straightforward. So if you ever want somebody to be honest with you, unfortunately, I'm that person. Um, but like Lindsay said, I um, – I, when I started this business, I have watched Lindsay kind of go and do this business for about three years when I started, and I knew that it was a commitment, and I knew what I was about to get into, and I knew that I wanted to change. I didn't want to be working for other people anymore. I wanted to be working for myself, so I kind of went into this knowing that I was going to be a business builder, so I think you know, just having that mindset and telling Lindsay, because she asked, you know, when I joined, she was like, do you want to walk or do you want to run or do you want to sprint? And I was like, you know, I really want to make this my business. So she was like, okay, well, here we go. So I went diamond in like 95 days, which made me mad because I could have gone in 90 days, but I was like five days short of it. And, but anyways, that's all good. But from day one, I have been intentional with my time and that is something that I don't play around with and I make people set schedules and stick to them. I'm a very routine person but I'm disorganized so I know that kind of doesn't go hand in hand but it works for me because it takes the like a lot of the guesswork out of the organization I guess when you're being more routine with your time. I don't know if that makes sense, but it makes sense in my brain. Um, so basically, I work as a dietitian at a hospital from like 8.30 to 4.30. And while I'm at work, I will post during the day when I'm like going to the restroom <laughs> or like on lunch break or any time that I have a break during the day. Um, so I make sure that I'm staying constantly engaged on Facebook. But... After work, I come home, I get my boys, and that's family time because that's important to me. And then my boys, I'm very fortunate that I've been able to sleep train them to go to bed at 7.30 every night, and so that's awesome. And I, I go work out at 8 o'clock every single night. So this is my workout time, but I do work out every night at 8 o'clock. And that gives me the energy because usually I'm drained, but if I go work out, that kind of perks me up and it gives me the energy that I need to and like the confidence I need to start working on my business that night because when I don't work out I really you really feel like you're doing a disservice to people that you're reaching out to I don't know that's just the way I feel but um anyway so I work out from 8 to 8 30 so I love the 30 minute um workouts and then after that, I pretty much just go to work on my computer, and I will work at least an hour and a half, or an hour, but most of the time it's an hour and a half to two hours every night, and it's always checking into my challenge groups, doing that power hour thing list that we have, you know, pretty much checking into my team page, checking in and making sure that, you know, I'm messaging the people that I need to message. I'm checking into my challenge group and commenting on people's posts and you know, stuff like that. But in the beginning, it wasn't that easy. It really, you know, seemed very, um, like this business just seemed so huge. Like it was just like, where do I start? What do I do? And so I'll just kind of tell you what I did for those two hours every night when I first started, just to kind of get the groundwork um, going. So first of all, you have to kind of start with your own fitness journey and your own nutrition. And um, so 
I mean, if you're not drinking Shakeology or doing the workouts, it's kind of hard for you to promote doing the workouts and drinking Shakeology. So I made sure that I was at least doing the fitness program and doing the three vital behaviors. So I was sharing on Facebook what I was doing. And before Beachbody, I was kind of like one of those scarce Facebook people. I, I would kind of stalk everybody, but I really didn't post every day. But I was following Lindsay. I was following Courtney. I was following, um, you know, I mean, I just checked in and I would post like the birth of my baby, but I wouldn't post daily interactions. So it was very hard for me to kind of come out of that comfort zone and start posting. So I knew like that first week I told my coworkers, I was like, it's about to get real. Like I'm about to just bust out, you know, here because I've seen these girls post all day. So I guess that's what you got to do. So I just like, okay, here we go. <laughs> and so I just started posting and, um, I immediately shared my story about being a dietitian that was overweight, that still struggles with emotional eating and, you know, getting back into the fitness world with two babies. Okay. And I also have two jobs. So besides Beachbody, I work at a nursing home too. So, um, but anyways, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. So I had to get started with my own and posted like, your quote unquote coming out post like, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing this beach body program. I'm now a beach body coach. Of course you want to say it in your own words and more eloquent and more soft, but, um, posting that coming out post. Um, and then on top of that, I watched a lot of YouTube videos during those two hours at night and I would watch like, why be a beach body coach? Those things like Lindsay has a video, Lindsay Matway has a video on that. I think Beachbody, Lindsay Say, like Brittany Leggett, like a lot of those top coaches have great videos on why be a Beachbody coach. So that kind of helped me understand what I should say to other people. And then um, I also watched other videos about how to run challenge groups and what Emerald means. So I was just kind of learning like the basics of the business you know because there's so much out there so just learning those little bitty basics so when somebody asked me about it I didn't feel incompetent to answer um so I, I watch YouTube videos and I would practice on my coworkers at work so I would go to work and I'd be like okay this is what I think I should say and they would be like yeah that sounds great and in the end both of them have become beach body coaches so I must have done good but, um, so I would practice at work. I learned to say no to a lot of things. Um, you know, phone calls is when I used to talk to a lot of my friends at eight o'clock, you know, after the babies went to bed, but I try to make those phone calls during the day. Um, people want to meet for dinner or, you know, just hang out and stuff like, I just don't have time for that. You know, I mean, it's just not there right now and you know it's just something that I've had to kind of put boundaries on until I can do those things but right now my priorities are working my business and being with my family on top of that oh and not to mention my husband is a firefighter so he is gone every third day for 24 hours so that's another thing that I have to add on to my list that I'm a single mom every third day so um so saying no has come a lot easier now than it used to. Um, trusting the process, you know, I mean, getting plugged into a 21 day child, I mean, you know, training group or getting into a 10 days to Emerald group, whatever group you, whatever level you're at, you know, getting plugged in and just doing it, doing the stuff. I think we could get so much training. It's unreal. But you've got to just trust it and just do it. And you know the day that you sign up that you social media is a big part of our business. It's the largest part of mine. It's the only thing I do is Facebook and a little bit of YouTube videos. But you have to put yourself out there. Like if you're not posting every day and you're not being consistent, then people are not going to trust you with their, you know, 
their story. I don't know. That's just the way I feel. I mean, I saw the consistency in Lindsay. And I mean, I watched her for three years. I was waiting for her to fall. Like, I was like, okay, when she's going to, when she, oh, well, bam, now she's making $5,000 a week. I better jump on this bandwagon. So, I mean, you're just, you know, people are watching you. I mean, you can say no, get somebody to say no a million times, but they're still watching you. If they haven't unfriended you, they're still watching you. So keep posting, stay positive. Um, Let's see. Be your best challenger, I think, too. You know, when you start having progress and you start having success with the programs, it automatically gives you confidence in this business um, before you even make your first paycheck. Just knowing how amazing Shakeology makes you feel. And when you go a day without it, how brain fog you feel. You know, those little things like that are what are going to give you the confidence in your business. And so when you post these things, you can post them with confidence. The more longer that you've been doing this, the better it gets, but I'm still not there. Like I still have a lot to learn about posting and being, you know, better about that. But anyways, um, when you get coaches under you, I think a lot of people just are like, Oh, I got a coach and um, free Willie, you know, but you can't do that. Like you have to, <laughs> sorry, Lindsay, <laughs> you're making me laugh. <laughs> okay. So um, you have to help your coaches along. Like you have to give them goals and you have to find out where they're at in their business. If they are just there for a discount coach, like, okay, that's fine. Still add them to your groups, but if they're there as a business builder, you need to plug in with them. You need to communicate with them. I mean, Kelsey Mears, I don't y'all have seen her name at the top of a lot of the charts, but when she first started, like we talked all the time and we dreamed together. We, you know, planned things together. We talked about her goals together and stuff like that. So it was like we were invested in each other. And I think that's important with your your business builders is that you want to have that relationship with them where they feel like they can vent to you or that they can, you know, rely on you for anything. So I try to try my best to be there for my business builders, especially encouraging them to set goals. Now, you have a lot of them that will tell you they're business builders and they're really not and they're not doing their thing. And then when they ask you what they're doing wrong and you're honest with them and they don't ask you anymore. So I don't know what happens there. Um, you can't push the rope, right? Um, learn from my mistakes. Do not miss hosting a challenge group in the month. Um, because when you miss it, you're not going to do your workouts. Let me just tell you, like it's hard and people start looking forward to your challenge groups every month and they start knowing that you're about to have a challenge group every month and it, your challengers depend on it too. So this is also important for making success club, obviously. And if your time constraint like me, like I use Hootsuite sometimes to post in my challenge groups. I used to use that a lot in the beginning. I don't use it as much now because I already know what I'm going to post now. But in the beginning, I was posting a lot from Hootsuite and that really helped me feel like there was already some fitness tip or nutrition tip when the challengers woke up in the morning because I'm not an early morning person. I don't feel like being like, hey, welcome to Monday. It's time to get your fitness on. You know, so I just go ahead and post that on Sunday night and then it opens up on Monday. <laughs> Lindsay, stop. Okay. I think the biggest thing too is remaining a student and never stop refining your business. There are things that I still have to learn. And once I'm able to do this job full time, which will be very soon, I will do a lot more with my business. And I'm excited. You know, we, there's a lot of us that put a lot of pressure on ourselves. When we do work full time, we are full time moms. And I think taking that pressure off and just making small to do lists, focusing on that power hour every day um, is, is probably the most important thing that you can do 
to kind of build your business to where you can eventually one day spend more time in other areas. But trying to tackle too many things at one time and it's just going to burn you out. So you really just need to kind of start small and learn as you go. Um, let's see. I'm sorry. I'm disorganized. Um, set big goals. But then from those big goals, you need to have small goals. Like, okay, yeah, great. I want to be a 15-star diamond coach one day. But before I'm a 15-star diamond coach one day, I got to be a diamond coach. You know, so you've got to set those intentional goals. Um, so have your big goals, but then have your small goals that are going to help be your stepping stone towards your big goals. Um, stop scrolling Facebook. Like, that is my biggest pet peeve. And I tell my coaches all the time, like, I see that you're on Facebook. Why are you not posting? And it is, it's the biggest time waster there is. It's just scrolling through Facebook. Unless you're, like, at work or sitting on a bus or in your car, the passenger seat at a red light, whatever, don't scroll. I mean, that's just time wasting. Sorry. That's one of my pet peeves. Um, turn the TV off. It's the devil. Um, these are just tips for like busy people and don't go to bed without doing your power hour. And so I do like my personal development. I know you all want to know this, but I do it in the bathtub or I listen to it in the car on the way to work or I listen to it at work. Like a lot of times we will all listen to like Zig Ziglar or we'll listen to the team calls the next day at work, like we play it on the computer, because since we're all beach body coaches now at work, I mean, it kind of works for us. Um, but every single hour of my day has intention, like it's, it's designated towards something. So there's not a minute that I really waste in the day. And when I see my house is a mess, I just think I need to make enough money to have somebody come help me clean my house so I can spend more time on my business. So I don't know. That's all I have to say. Does anyone have any questions? That's kind of random. I don't know. Lindsay, you can talk. Okay, okay, so my, my someone was talking. Don't don't because I'm echo. Because I'm echo. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um. Okay. Well. Okay. Well. Did everyone else hear that? Okay. Okay. Uh, well, I won't to count too much because much that would just drive us all crazy. But I was still taking notes when you were talking. That was awesome. That was really, really awesome. Um, I hadn't finished my sentence yet, but you said, um, I look around, my house is a mess, and that just inspires me to work harder. And that basically means to me is <clears throat> set goals based on what you want to earn, not on um, what you already have, you know? We always have to be stepping ahead. You know, what else can I can I strive for? Uh, dude, that was awesome. I guess my one question would be for you, and then I'll um, mute myself again, would be um, you did something that I recommended to a long time ago. I made a list that said time is never an excuse, and I made a list of everything that I did in a day and a week, and if it, I couldn't draw a line from that to one of my main priorities, I marked it off the list. and. One of them was uh, going out to eat with friends that weren't beach body coaches, didn't have plans on becoming beach body coaches. Basically, my mentality was, if you're not a prospect, I'm not going to be you know sitting around with you. And I lost a lot of friends. Tell me how you um, dealt with that, or how your friends are dealing with that. Um. Yeah, I went through a hard period with that I had some of my closest friends who are dietitians in Birmingham um they pretty much told me like they didn't support it and you know a lot of dietitians don't support other dietitians doing stuff like this and that was very hard but I knew that these 
people were probably stagnant in their life and it I I was aiming for something a little different in my life um and I just told them I just kind of let it fall I mean we talk sparingly now but if they didn't support me you know I mean then they weren't really true friends in my opinion like it at that time it seemed like a big loss but at this time it really doesn't so that's just kind of I just thought if you were really my true friend like you would support me that's yeah. Yeah. I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can. just give me, just give me, two, you know, you know, two years. Two years. Uh, but, uh, but found, found that, that, like you said, that throwing, throwing in different directions and, and really had it, had it common in the middle. Thanks for your insight. Thanks for your insight. Let's see, let's see questions and questions and chat. Chat, How do you watch. keep from getting distracted? Um, sometimes you just get distracted and you just have to get back on it. I just try not to go to bed until my power hour to do list is done. And, you know, I can't rest easy knowing that my business is incomplete. Like, and this is where my hope lies is in this. So, if, you know, your goals should kind of keep you a little unrested. And so that's what keeps me focused. Like I'm really distracted at, at my quote unquote day job. You know, I'm not as much distracted when I'm working on beach body at night. Good, good. Okay. I have, I have, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you asking how we get customers to become coaches, like how I talk them into it or yeah. Yeah. okay. Um, usually it's from your challengers and your challenge group. I, I really try to hit it from the angle, like of the discount coach, you know, and then it's like, Hey, but there's also this great business opportunity that you can follow here. You know, um, usually the discount coach kind of gets them on board and then they like, I mean, Kristen Woods is one of my quote unquote discount coaches. who's a business builder now, you know, um, once they see the potential, then they usually get on. But to me, you shouldn't have to say too much to kind of convince somebody if they've already been a challenger or a customer that this is a great company. And if you have to do a lot of convincing, it may not be the easiest coach for you to work with. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're looking for business builders, if you're just looking for coaches to increase your rank, then sell them on the discount, you know, to get them started. And that also helps you with your confidence too. A lot of my first coaches were just discount coaches. Yay, are there any more questions? Let's see. Please share. Danielle says, would you please share what are your tips from reaching out to people outside of your circle? I'm going to run out of friends soon. Oh, that's a good problem. Um, I think carrying your shaker cup with you everywhere you go. I mean, I always keep water in my shaker cup. I mean, they can tell you that. Um, people at work, I work at a hospital, so obviously they noticed that I lost weight. And so I just sing the praises all day. Um, I wear my jacket a lot and people are like, what's psychology, you know? And so, you know, just stopping and having those conversations, um, just really listening to people, asking them questions and just kind of, I think people just want to talk about themselves. So when you ask people questions, like they just will unload on you. And, um, I think, Using that resource, I think Lindsay has it posted in the files of DFG, like thinking outside of your box, like who your hairdresser, you know, who all do you come in contact with during the day? I think, you know, and another thing I do, y'all, is 
I stalk Facebook, like as far as who's on Facebook and who's not related with Beachbody. Like I look to the right and you know, when you're on your desktop or laptop and you can see who's on Facebook right then. And that's who I messaged like right then. And so I know that they got it and they may not have been my friend for like 10 years, but I see you on there. Um, so sorry, <laughs> but yeah, like that's what I like to, I like to do that. Um, to see who's on Facebook. Cause really, if you're not on Facebook, I really got nothing for you, but, um, just trying to get those people first. And then also looking through your, Husband, if you're married, like looking through the mutual friends that you guys have that are girls, that's a good one. Um, getting your like page kind of going. Like I love, I like sharing my posts from my like page to my regular page, and that's how I kind of get a lot of likes to my like page. And there's an, I'm sure there's a whole call that you could do on that. But um, you know. You really just have to kind of dig for friends sometimes. Sometimes you have to look at acquaintances and not friends. Is there any more questions? Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> seeing his online. Back to the question right before. I'm having some good success with asking my current challengers, would you be willing to bring someone into our next challenge group with you? That's an awesome, awesome strategy, Kristen. Like, she's saying that asking her current challengers, like, hey, bring a friend with you to do your next challenge group. That's a great way. Yeah, I've had friends, friends of friends buy challenge packs from me, and that's it's always good word of mouth, too. And Kristen runs some great challenge groups. She's very engaged in her challenge groups, too. Um... That's it. I mean, I do add friends still every day. Like I'm always, um, I don't add friends who always friend request me, especially if you get some random person that you don't have any friends in common, they can still follow you. So it's not like you're, you know, ignoring their friend request. but I'm very intentional with who I accept friend requests from and who I don't, you know, I want to, I have a market, you know, and I think focusing in on your market and you can, when you go on Facebook on line on your, from your desktop or laptop, you can narrow down your searches for people that you might know. I mean, and I work at Crestwood, which is a small hospital, but it still has a lot of people. And there's a lot of people I didn't know were on Facebook. And so just kind of, we know, we know each other by passing, but just adding them as friends, you know, just, Searching your old college stomp grounds or high school, whatever. Any more? How do I add friends? I don't know anyone else. LOL. I constantly scroll through the people you may know and not too many people that I know on there. Ugh. Well, I kind of figure if we have more than like 15 friends in common, maybe they think I know them. So I just add them anyway. And I kind of leave it up to them. I don't know. I know you can get kind of get in trouble for that if somebody turns you in, but I haven't yet. Knock on wood. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, but, but, do that strategy, 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 and then you can send a message along with it saying, you know, hey, I just noticed that we had so-and-so, so-and-so in common, and I creeped your page, LOL, whatever, um, and I saw that we, you know, have similar things going on in our lives, and I just wondered, or I thought that you'd be a cool friend to have, hope you don't mind, or any, like, nonchalant, super friendly, short, uncreepy message <laughs> to accompany with it so they don't block you or return you in or whatever. An idea. That was awesome. Jody. you were handling these questions like a champ. You are seriously made for this. Love it. 
Okay, does anyone else have any questions? Uh, fire them away. Otherwise, we're gonna let everyone get off. She kept it at 30 minutes, which is perfection. And I can let her say goodbye, but I'm gonna say goodbye now and I will stop the recording and then Jody can say.